Rose of the Roses on this battle. We have Lord Trollop and we have Captain Lovelace. We have no fun at all with those, those names, believe me. Well, that commander didn't like the drum. Yes. I don't know why. I Absolutely. Yes. Well, I think maybe they're trying to sneak up on the uh, Gates and Albans. Oh, maybe that's right. why the gun was silenced. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to use your imagination. Here you are actually looking at St Albans rather than an empty field. But if we put the town here, you wouldn't be able to see the soldiers fighting in it. So we took it away again. At great expense to ourselves. Absolutely. Just the fortune. As you can hear, they're quite clanky when they march onto the field. So imagine a large army, and they were large. By the Yorkists, one of the guys was fortunately... And a small skirmish ensues. A few arrows being popped across there as well. Just a little bit of harassing shooting. We've got another um, unit of men coming at some speed across the field. Because they've got to work out what they're up against and how many. The Lancaster is now taking the field at quite some speed. So Lord Trollope there shouting, he needs he needs assistance and he needs it right now. The Lancastrian handgunners, I can see, are busy loading as well. So things are going to get quite noisy quite quickly. Now, of course, gunpowder is uh, quite new to warfare and it will gradually take over as the predominant way of killing the other side. But at the moment, the handguns are hopelessly inaccurate and probably more of a danger to their own... Um, side, especially the ones shooting them. So archery is still a very, very important uh, part of a battle. But when it comes down to it, it's when you are elbow to elbow with your enemy. Ar it's no. The, um, I believe the Duke of Somerset is about to take the field. I can see his colours there. The gentleman with a very fine moustachio. He's waiting. There we go. He's saluting you from the crowd line. Both looks and the Duke of Somerset. 10 years later, but that's a spoiler, you understand. There is more Lancastrian troops coming onto the field now. The white cell tire on the black background. They're new to the battle, they've been rested. And although you never really get a good night's rest when you're sleeping under a hedgerow or not even a um, At the moment, both sides are fairly equally matched and they're quite fresh. They're not tired yet. Casualties start to mount when soldiers start to tire because at that point they make mistakes and if you make mistakes you're dead. Good officer. It is. It's very, in a medieval time you led from the front. It meant you inspired your troops and could uh, see what was happening right up the sharp end. But conversely it did mean you couldn't see what was happening elsewhere. You didn't have an overview. And as we'll see this afternoon that can go horribly wrong when you don't know what is happening on the rest of the battlefield. Ah, the Yorkers seem to be pushing the battle. You see that it's generated almost as a hand-to-hand -hand brawling. If you look at the, uh, the troops closer to the crowd line, there's lots of wrestling back there. Well, when it comes down to it, it's not really stuck, is it? It doesn't really matter how you disable or kill your opponent, as long as you do. Happy, flashy, stabby, stabby, dusting. Uh, yes, it is. Happy, stabby, stabby, dusting. It's all happy, stabby, 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 dusting. Oh, there you go. Look at, look at this. Oh, yeah. The, um, yeah. Ooh. Almost took it on the back of the leg there. That's the, the hamstring. That'd be very unpleasant. <laughs> very nice if it can cut through the rubber. The important thing, of course, ladies and gentlemen, at this time is for your troops to retain their their order, uh, not to fight individually, but to fight as a block of soldiers. It's not like um, fighting, though, I don't know, and not your own men. The fight will be freshening up there towards the middle of the block. See the archers on the wings as well, shooting at each other. One or two of them have got the way. So we've got one casualty down, shot with an arrow. York is engaging with the Lancastrian there on the right flank, taking it in for them. They are. They are trying very hard to keep Lancastrians out of this album. At the moment they're doing a reasonably good job of it, aren't they? They are. We're considering they're doing outnumbered. The Lancastrians now falling back up the slope. Oh, ah, and the Yorkists are falling down the slope. Now, this is quite sensible because um, contact fighting is very, very exhausting. And I said earlier, if you're tired, you make mistakes and you get killed. So the commanders know this and will draw their forces apart to make sure the soldiers have a bit of a rest between 
violent bouts of action. So there will always be a bit of standing around doing nothing because you've got to rest your troops and get them back into their blocks so they're not all over the place. Um, so it's the right wing here next to us, that is now drawn apart, but uh, the battles on the other side of the field, they're still fighting. So that's, that's Love, Lovelace versus the Duke of Somerset there. It they're is. just separating now, aren't they? They are indeed. The men, of, men of Kent under Captain Lovelace, I believe. Separating now. There's, there seems to be some kind of negotiation going on there. There's, there's a, a parlay of some sort happening. Well, I imagine it's more like shouting abuse, but oh, you never know. Yeah. The thing about allegiances could shift. So it could be, in actual fact, that one side is trying to persuade the other side to change sides well, that's, or, or just go away. Look, look at the body language. There's definitely some kind of persuasion going on here, isn't there? there? Is. This, is, this is quite Gentlemen interesting. Blue, What's blue? going on? Oh, and oh, they're embracing. Yeah. Now, uh, that's, well, look at that. They were trying to kill each other a minute ago. And now it looks like there's some sort of... Who's going, going, going to join who? Or are they just... Ah! So they're all joining the Lancastrians! Look at this! So Lovelace and the men of Kent have, for whatever reason, decided to draw their loss in with the Lancastrians and change side mid-battle. Maybe they see the way the battle's going. Maybe, or maybe they were just bribed with a large sum of money. You just don't know, do you? Well, that's a total shock for the Yorkers, who suddenly found themselves completely outmatched. How are they going to handle this? Do you think the Yorkers would just... Get the hell out of them, or should they stand and fight? Well, are they somewhat trapped in St Albans? Is there an easy way? Well, they can, they can always just run through the town, I suppose. It's a bit ignominious, isn't it? It looks like they're, they're going to still make a fight of it, despite the fact they're now horribly outnumbered. Now, what yeah. this means, ladies and gentlemen, is the Lancastrians can send waves of troops in, fight the Yorkists, withdraw them so, so there's time to rest, and then send another wave in so the Yorkists don't have any time to rest. Imagine the early stuff of it, that's just horrified what's happening there. What's that? Lambo's done. Why is he doing this? Why is he deserting me? But, and now is the time the casualties will start to mount because these Yorkist troops will start to get very tired. Second wave going in there. Yeah, so no respite whatsoever for the Yorkists. The second wave going in. And there's a third wave waiting in reserve. If I was the Yorkist now, I'd be, oh dear, I wouldn't know what to do. Turning around, changing the pants and running. Absolutely, or perhaps they should change sides. I don't know what's going to happen though. Imagine that uh, any of Lovelace's men get tangled up with the Yorkists there. They, they will find themselves um, not very popular. So. Oh dear, that's, that's going to get mildly. So now the uh, Lancastrians seem to have committed virtually all their force and the Yorkists will start to disintegrate unless they're uh, much harder than I think. See the Duke of Somerset there looking very pleased with what's going, going on and so of course as well. So the Yorkists are still hanging on, but it can only be a matter of time now. It's fighting like demons, they're fighting so bravely. I wonder whether they've got somebody at the back actually sort of mopping up any to try to escape. It's entirely possible, isn't it? Just pushing them back into the line. Yeah. The handgunners, of course, are still blazing away. They're not directly uh, engaged because no one in their right mind is going to run up to somebody with a medieval handgun pointing at them. Lovely for this man there. Oh, the August is still fighting, but they're starting to go down. Oh, yeah. Tragic is now. And if you're on the ground, that's when you get a, a kill, oh dear, yeah, a dead. stab through the eye slit, or a, a smash to the chest with a... Oh, this is not looking good at all. Another one's down. Slaughter. Slaughter. And there are two units of men going into what's left of the poor beleaguered Yorkist army. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you are taking sides in this battle, but it does look like uh, the Lancastrians are winning, so why not give the Lancastrians a big cheer? But, if you're a Yorkist supporter, and let's say it and really loves Richard III, happy to be, and he'll be around later in the Yorkist cause, give them a cheer as well. Oh, a smaller cheer. Right, you're obviously on the winning side today then. And it looks like the Yorkists have been largely cut 
down and some of them have run away. Uh, I believe um, Lord Montague has just been captured, I just see. Has he? Oh, that's yeah, so interesting. So Mon Montague, one of the Yorkist commanders, yeah. has been captured. Yeah, he's been captured. And of course it's safer to keep him, better to keep him alive. The um, oh. Yorkist archers, uh, the remainder of the Yorkist troops have actually just left the field. Yeah, they've just legged it, which is very sensible of them. And now all that's left on the field is the dead, the dying, and the victorious uh, Lancaster Indians standing around thinking, oh, how did we do that? That was great. The Montague there, just be just limping, you can see, with the plumes in his helmet, just limping across there. Well, I, I suspect he may not live very long. Well, it's quite possible, because in the World of Roses, quite often enemy commanders were summarily executed. Let's see what happens to him. He, they might let him off. Oh, look, he's kneeling down there. Oh, oh, oh dear, this doesn't look good, does it? So, it really depends on whether the Earl of Suffolk is feeling pleasant and nice today or not. Let's, let's see what he does. So he's bringing, bringing him forward. Montague's been brought forward. So somebody will have to make the executive decision to execute him. Yeah. Today. Actually, it does look like they're just going to hold him captive. They haven't thrown him to the ground or... No! It looks like he's got away with it. That's unusual, I have to say. So, the troops are coming out. And it's the end of the battle. The Lancastrians are very, very happy. So, how about you give the Lancastrians and the Yorkists the hugest cheer that you can? And now the map... Oh, they just knocked Montague to the ground. Oh, dear. Oh no! Look at that! Oh, the good little kick! Oh dear! Poor old Lord Montague. That killed him though. They just kicked him around a bit. Oh, he's got off lightly actually. Get back on your knees, we've got the king now. He's being brought across the field. Yes, so they found Henry the Sixth. Here's the king. He probably doesn't know the king, but then we know. We have his wife, Mother de Anjou, we have his young son, Edward, now coming to be reunited with Henry. For God and Henry! 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 For God and Young son carrying the white feather greets his father affectionately. So what a spectacular turnaround! Only like an hour ago, Henry VI was captured with his family, and he has an army. Wow! Well, so ladies and gentlemen, how about a huge cheer for the Lancastrians? And now the magic bit by the power invested upon me. I will ask the dead to arise. And while they do, cheer the Yorkers! Yeah. Oh, we have someone being knighted on the battlefield as well. We have, um... Ooh. So we have Trollope being knighted on the battlefield. Oh, that's great. Well, he's done very well, so. That's good. So he's now... That's good. And Margaret is now negotiating, I believe, for... For... Montague's life, maybe? Maybe. Well, Montague's... Oh. And the, uh, the young prince is being brought forward, and he's carrying that feather still. I have a feeling this feather may signify something. Right, dear. What's he going to do? Oh, oh, dear. Montague's on these knees Montague's again. Montague's down. The young Edward is being asked a question. Oh, he's the young asking Edward whether to kill him or not. The young boy, eight years of age, is being asked whether this man should die or live. That is quite something to ask an eight-year-old. Looks like Montague's begging Pleading, for his life. Pleading for his life, isn't it? Pleading for his life. Oh, and he's in for land. How to get these things? Oh, he's been pardoned. Well, well, well. Oh, well, what mercy that young young prince has just shown. Absolutely. This is one of the rare cases of mercy towards an enemy commander in the world of the Roses, I have to say. He's still early on, though. It's only 1640. I'm um, sorry. 1461, and he's got the wrong way around. There's still another 15 years to run until the end of these wars. So, well, it's a sort of reasonably happy ending for Montague. Um, he'll no doubt be ransomed for a large sum of money and told not to be a naughty boy and fight for the Yorkists again.
I do have it on good authority. If the young prince had dropped that white feather, Montague's fate would have been somewhat less pleasant. Really? Well, yeah. That's what he didn't matter, isn't yeah. it? My lords, ladies and gentlemen, can we have a huge round of applause for the Royal Party, please? And the king is, of course, Henry, the sixth of his name, by the grace of God, King of England. And a round of applause, please, for the reenactors of the Second Battle of St Albans here at Barnet today. Now they will climb back to their encampments, where you're, of course, very welcome to go and visit them. And if you are inspired to become a soldier, a billman, a bowman, or a knight, or a man-at-arms, or a gunner, then pop up to the encampment and you'll see a blue square flag with a white ram on it and a cross of St George, and that's where the reenactors are with... Congratulations! Done in Baskin control again. Long live Lancaster. Well done, long may it last there. He'll get his own in ten years' time at the Battle of Bond. No.